So we can start. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we're very happy to have the first talk of the afternoon uh, by Niels uh, Karkeville, who wasn't able to be with us in person, but we're happy that he's giving this uh, Zoom talk. And he's going from the University of uh, uh, Vienna, who is going to talk about truncated Rosansky witten models as extended defect TQFTs. Uh, Niels, please. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you also for making it possible to participate from afar. I would like to report on some progress made in joint work with Ilka, Pantelis, and Daniel on constructing a three dimensional TQFT from non semi simple data. More precisely, um, these are Rosensky Witten models that are topological twists of three dimensional supersymmetric sigma models and are conjectured to lead to 3D TQFTs. Um, I don't know that this is rigorously understood already now, but there is some progress we can report on, which to a large extent um, hinges on important work by Kapustin, Rosensky, and Saudina uh, more than 10 years ago, where they constructed a very detailed sketch of a three category that describes rosensky witten models and the, all the defects. What is much better understood is a sub three category where we only consider a fine targets for the Sigma model. And uh, this is very nearly understood as a three category, though I don't fully understand it uh, in rigorous detail as a symmetric monoidal three category. So um, I don't know how to apply directly the cobordism hypothesis in three dimensions. However, if we truncate and only consider the homotopy two category of this three category, then we can show that this has a natural pivotal symmetric monoidal structure as a two category, and every object is fully dualizable. And we find all the trivializations of the cell automorphism, which then means that we can apply the cobordism hypothesis with singularities or with defects to construct extended TQFTs for this truncated version where we only consider the homotopy two category. And we obtain in this way a uh, symmetric monoidal functor from defect bordisms in dimension two uh, here to this target two category. So the second part of my talk is about explaining what this two category is in detail. And the first part of the talk is to um, review uh, two-dimensional fully extended TQFTs and how they can be made very explicit in the construction. Um, I, I want to stress that these types of Rosensky width models we understand in uh, very great explicit detail. But let's start with extended TQFTs, first framed extended TQFTs, all in dimension two. I'd like to start by recalling some symmetric monoidal categories, uh, two categories and that you might want to have in mind. Of course, there's uh, the category of bordisms. Objects are two-frame points, and the home categories are one- and two-dimensional such bordisms. Then there's alge, finite dimensional uh, algebras over a field, and home categories are finite dimensional bimodules and bimodule maps. Maybe I skip the next one. Uh, there's a two category of landau ginsburg models whose objects are polynomials that describe isolated singularities, and the home categories are homotopy categories of matrix factorizations. And as I said, in the second part of the talk, I'll explain in some detail what this homotopy two category of rosensky witten models is for the case of the fine targets. Of course, there are many other interesting examples of symmetric monoidal two categories like Lex and Rex or uh, two categories of DG categories, but for my talk, uh, these will suffice. What is very crucial to the applications I want to present is a three-dimensional graphical calculus for monoidal two categories that builds, among others, on important work by Willerton and Barrett Moisburger Schaumann. So in a monoidal two category, we have three types of compositions, the monoidal product for objects one and two cells, the horizontal composition that I denote with a tensor symbol for one and two morphisms and vertical composition just for two morphisms. And I denote them respectively 
um, for, um, by reading diagrams from front to back and from right to left for the horizontal composition and from bottom to top. So using this, the picture on the right-hand side denotes a two-morphism or two-cell from uh, what we have down here, because I read from bottom to top, X prime tensor Y prime to X tensor Y box one tensor Z, sorry, tensor one box Z. Uh, th these are the convention I want to use. And then we can, for example, also describe the braiding, uh, which uh, in a two category consists of one morphism and two morphism components. Here you can see uh, the one morphism components from an object for an object U from U box U prime to U prime box U. And even more importantly, uh, duality plays, of course, a very crucial role in uh, TQFT. Um, where here the, um, the, the left-hand side of what is currently highlighted is the evaluation that is part of the witness of the witnesses um, that explain how U hash is the dual object for U. Since we have extra two morphisms, the Zorro moves or snake identities need not hold um, on the nose, but only up to an isomorphism, which is the cusp isomorphism on the right-hand side. If we read it from bottom to top, then um, it's a two isomorphism from this reflected Z as in Zorro to the straight line upstairs. Now, using this, we can state uh, what a 2D framed extended TQFT is, valued in a fixed symmetric monoidal two category B. It's a structure preserving functor Z from the bordism category to the target. And then the non-infinity version of the cobordism hypothesis in this case states that the two-groupoid of such TQFTs highlighted here is equivalent to the maximal sub-two-groupoid of the fully dualizable objects in the target category. And this equivalence is straightforward. One might think um, it's simply sending a TQFT to what it evaluates to on the point, which necessarily must be a fully dualizable object, uh, object, meaning that the object has a dual and the evaluation and co-evaluation one cells for that duality themselves have left and right adjoints. Um, but to actually compute um, addition functions, state spaces, et cetera, in a TQFT, one needs to know a little bit more than this conceptual uh, version of the cobordism hypothesis. So I want to discuss this in two steps. Here on this slide, on the first step, you see the definition again. So if we have a fully dualizable object U, then we get a TQFT. By construction, it sends the positively framed point to that fully dualizable object. And it sends the negatively framed point to uh, the, the chosen dual. It sends a half circle representing the right evaluation, witnessing the minus point as the right dual of the plus point to a choice of a right evaluation, one morphism for the object U. Uh, the other half circle, which, which is the mirror image, turns out to be the left adjoint of this one cell in the bordism two category. And it must be sent to a choice of left adjoint and so on and so on. So in particular, here, a circle can be uh, understood as a composition of two such half circles. And because of functoriality, it must be sent to the horizontal composition of these two choices of a junction one cells and, and the adjoint. And this goes on. So we can reconstruct what a given TQFT does uh, for arbitrary one cells, but also for arbitrary two cells, which are two framed surfaces. So here, for example, we have an upside down saddle, which I view as uh, a map from here is evaluation left dagger, the left adjoint of evaluation plus. Here we have evaluation plus as in the third line above. And upstairs, we just have two straight horizontal lines. That's the identity one cell on plus disjoint union minus point. 
And this turns out to be a left evaluation for the right evaluation for the plus point. So we must send it to a choice of such an adjunction to morphism in the target category. And similarly, the cap, uh, this map here, is a right evaluation for the right evaluation of plus, and it needs to be sent to a choice of uh, such an adjunction map in the target. So I, I try to stress that it's always a choice, and uh, these choices are subject to some extra conditions, which I want to uh, describe under the heading of part two of this more explicit formulation of the Corbettism hypothesis, which is uh, due to a very nice and very clearly written detailed paper by Stagowski from uh, nearly 10 years ago that was published last year. So this uh, group that classifies framed 2D extended TQFTs is equivalent to some other group point um, that Stagowski calls that of coherent full duality data or something like this. Uh, I call it coherent fully duality data. And uh, what is it? Um, what does an object consist of? Well, it's an object U in the category B and a choice of dual and a choice of a junction two morphisms. Then some stuff I'll come to in a moment. Here we have the uh, cusp isomorphisms from before, which are still part of the duality data for the one dualizability. But we want things also be, to be two dualizable. So we need to have evaluation and co-evaluation two cells for the evaluation and co-evaluation one cells. And then some other stuff, phi and psi, that I'll mention in a moment. But what is now highlighted, I think, is the most crucial part, um, at least for the application uh, I have to present a little later, but I want to give the full list. So as you, as it's for SER automorphism, the SER automorphism uh, is something that we can attach to any fully dualizable object in any uh, symmetric monoidal two category. Here's the definition. And uh, of course, it depends here on the choice of the junction, one morphism and its right adroid, but any choice uh, leads to something that is isomorphic to that. So it's unique up to two isomorphism, also proven by Pstagowski. The cusp isomorphisms see left U and see right U for the object U uh, we've seen already. And the maps phi and psi simply say that uh, the inverse for the cell automorphism actually is the inverse up to these isomorphisms. If one has such data um, that uh, exhibit U as being fully dualizable, then in particular, one also gets the left adjunction one cells simply by pre and post composing with the appropriate braiding one morphism. And we also get uh, all possible adjoints of the adjunction one morphisms. Here, for example, we have formulas for the right and the left adjoint of the evaluation morphism, but we can take uh, um, any any power of the adjunctions, also for co-evaluation. It's basically just um, the other evaluations plus some power of the, oops, cell automorphism. So these are the data, but in order to be coherent as full duality data, um, there are two equations that need to be satisfied. Uh, the first, which I'm highlighting now, is the so-called swallowtail identity. I think the name comes from the Poincaré dual way of presenting this identity. It's an identity that does not involve the adjunction two morphisms, only uh, the right, uh, the inverse of the right cusp isomorphism and the left cusp isomorphism. And the statement here is basically that for any choice of full duality data, we can make them coherent by um, possibly um, changing one of the cusp isomorphisms, but not the other. And then there's a unique way to do this. And there's a second consistency condition, um, which is highlighted here. So this equality sign here belongs um, inside that box. And it says that these two different two morphisms involving uh, on the uh, upside, on the left-hand side of the equation, just a junction data. On the right-hand side, a junction data for one cells downstairs, but there's two morphisms, only cusp isomorphisms. Um, that this, this together gives a condition on the choice of adjunction data. So in the end, only one pair of adjunction data appear 
might be changed if you come up with some full duality data in order to make it coherent. So this can always be solved. Um, and then we can indeed construct uh, a TQFT just from a fully dualizable object. So here's the more explicit version of the cobordism hypothesis in the framed case. Um, and now I want to read it um, basically in, into in the opposite direction. If we consider fully dualizable objects, the sub two group point thereof, then we can construct uh, an associated framed extended TQFT valued in our chosen uh, target category B simply by sending first U to uh, its image under the functor that I now call F, F upstairs here. So making a choice of coherent full duality data and then taking the bordism, whether it's zero cell or one cell or two cell and simply interpreting it in the graphical calculus where everything is labeled by the data uh, on the on the right hand side here that is highlighted again. All these data is then relevant. I'll show you some examples thereof in a few moments. This is of course all review uh, and maybe this is the, uh, the, the, the certainly the first example that I learned about um, in the two category ALGE of algebras, bimodules, and bidimodule maps over a field. It's precisely the separable algebras that are fully dualizable. Um, and if we fix such a separable algebra A, then we send the plus point to A, and it's dual the minus point to the dual algebra, which is the opposite algebra. Evaluation is sent to an evaluation, which in this case is a, a certain, is a right uh, module over the enveloping algebra, uh, the co-evaluation for the left adjunction, similarly for the left, and so on. And by uh, composing these two half circles with twists for the uh, for the framing, we get the, the zero-framed circle in this case, which uh, turns out to be mapped to zeroth co partial cohomology. Uh, sorry, zeroth partial homology of the chosen algebra. But since every separable algebra is in particular uh, a semi-simple algebra, the question arises, uh, can we also find uh, extended TQFTs in two dimensions that come from non-semi-simple data? And uh, this is, of course, true, but can't be the case for the target category uh, ALGE, but for other target categories, for example, Landau-Ginsburg models, which, as I said before, have certain types of polynomials as objects in the home categories are homotopy categories of matrix factorizations. And a few years ago, uh, Flavio Montel Montoya and I worked this out in quite some detail and computed that this indeed produces, uh, extends the well known Landau Ginsburg closed TQFT, which is built on the Jacobi algebra. Though here we only see the algebra and not yet for being a structure. So that's all I wanted to say in terms of review about uh, framed extended TQFTs. Now a few words on oriented extended two-dimensional TQFTs. This is the type of which these um, uh, the truncated rosensky witten models I'll discuss in the second part are examples of. Um, so orientations um, come about by basically very roughly averaging over all um, framings, more precisely by rotating frames in the frame bordism category we get an, a homotopy action of SO2 on the frame borders and category. So a functor from this truncated uh, fundamental group point of SO2, which of course, uh, uh, SO2 uh, and pi zero is contractible. So there's not much of a choice. Let's send it to the identity two functor on the borders and category. And let's send one of the two generators of pi one, which is Z to uh, to something that we call S. It seems to be conventional to take minus one uh, as the generator which is sent to uh, this Serre automorphism of the plus point, which is uh, the identity on the plus point up to one rotation of the framing. But this diagram here uh, on the very right hand side makes sense in any symmetric monoidal two category. If the object on the left and on the right hand side is fully dualizable, 
So if we now choose any fully dualizable object in some symmetric monoidal two category, then as before, we define the cell automorphism by the same uh, formula as I've already shown you when we talked about coherent full duality data. And here's the 3D picture of the identity two cell on that thing. But you see both the bottom and the top of this picture look very much like this picture where we rotated the frame here. And then the oriented version of the cobordism hypothesis, which in the realm of bi categories, no infinity, was proven um, in detail in Jan Hess's thesis uh, after joint work with uh, Alessandro Valentino and Christoph Schweigert. Christoph was uh, Jan's uh, PhD advisor. And it says that oriented extended GQFTs with values in some target B are precisely given by the groupoid of homotopy fixed point structures on fully dualizable objects. And uh, but um, explicitly, this means that we have a fully dualizable object U, as in the frame case, plus some trivialization, some chosen trivialization of the cell automorphism. If it doesn't exist, then we can't consider a braided theory, sorry, an oriented theory. Uh, this can also be made a bit more explicit um, and along the same lines as I've discussed uh, for the frame case. I want to read it again into the in the opposite direction. So if we start uh, with this category and um, understand objects as pet well, not like this, as as pairs of uh, fully dualizable objects U and trivializations lambda U of the cell automorphism, then the then the cobordism hypothesis instructs us to take some vortism and simply interpret it in the graphical calculus where we only use uh, a choice of coherent full duality uh, data for the object U, that's what I still denote by F of U, and the choice of, cell auto of trivialization of the cell automorphism. Here's a picture that's supposed to illustrate that. So let's start with a bordism, which is the torus, uh, a two-morphism from the identity on the unit object to itself. Then we decompose it, as we see here, into uh, identities on the left-hand side and the right-hand side, as well as caps and cups and uh, the saddle and upside-down versions of the saddle. And then where necessary, um, we insert what is called capital lambda U here, where capital lambda U is a chosen isomorphism from the left adjoint of the evaluation of U to the right adjoint of the evaluation of U, which is constructed from just the trivializations little lambda U and the adjoints. And then one can simply employ, uh, uh, the, employ the uh, graphical calculus and read um, of the formula in the, in the lower line, which is the same thing as the picture. So one can compute all these uh, we can think of them as partition functions from the two-dimensional point of view. Okay, and then uh, the question is, are there examples of oriented extended TQFTs? Of course, uh, a well-known example worked out in great detail by Christian Maprice in his thesis is that precisely um, separable algebras that come with the additional structure of symmetric Frobenius algebras, they give oriented extended TQFTs values valued in ALG, and also lambda ginsburg models can be made into oriented extended TQFTs. However, only if they de the polynomial depends on an even number of variables, otherwise the cell automorphism is not trivializable. But that's okay because really lambda ginsburg models are spin TQFTs. Uh, and this is something that Laurent Sagadi and I discussed in some detail about two years ago, but that's a different topic. Um, so from here, I would like to move on and now talk about truncated affine rosensky witten models after this first part on general-oriented extended TQFTs and some examples. So now I want to construct more examples on the way to understand, hopefully, rosensky witten models as fully extended TQFTs at some point. So uh, 
the, the only rigorously constructed TQFTs in the narrow sense as symmetric conoidal functors in three dimensions that I know are Richard Tikkin Toraev models. There is a less narrow version where one does not consider all bordisms um, that has um, produced a lot of very interesting progress in the last years. Um, but in the more narrow sense, I know no other examples. Toraev Euro models are uh, here considered as a subclass of Richard Tikkin Toraev models. As I said at the beginning, rosensky witten models are conjectured to be describable as TQFTs built from non-semi-simple data. Uh, they are obtained by twisting certain types of sigma models with uh, a target manifold that has a holomorphic symplectic structure. They're related to um, maybe more familiar two-dimensional twisted um, B models, and they are also interesting in the sense that they have local observables, so the state spaces on the sphere are not one-dimensional necessarily, and they participate in 3D mirror symmetry. All these are reasons uh, why I find them interesting. Um, and uh, Kapustin, Rosensky, and Saulina uh, studied these theories in great detail from a path integral perspective, and then Kapustin and Rosensky proposed uh, um, a a three category that describes all the defects in the bulk theories, but this is not very well understood, certainly not by me in, in the, this level of generality. But however, if we uh, restrict only to fine targets, so cotangent bundles of fine space CN, um, then this is still not trivial and so related to certain types of non-compact transcendence theories and to the theory of uh, a free or a various free uh, n equals four hypermultiplets. And that three category associated to the subclass of Rosensky with models is under fairly good control. And it's under even better control if we truncate to the homotopy two category. And this is the upshot of what I have to say in the last 20 minutes or so. Um, that we can construct extended defect TQFTs for this target. So uh, meaning that we understand at the very least uh, uh, the what is associated to points, lines, and surfaces, and maybe a bit more, as I'll say at the end. Um, because there's uh, 45 minutes are not a lot of time to discuss all of this, I, I want to give the basic idea at this point before we get into the details. There is a two category that I want to abbreviate to C. It's the two category of fine truncated Rosensky Witten models that is uh, at one level very simple objects. You should you can think of as variables, one cells as polynomials in such variables, two cells as matrix factorizations or other isomorphism classes thereof. And then we can prove that this category has a natural pivotal symmetric monoidal structure, and every object is fully dualizable. With this, we can then apply the cobordism hypothesis with singularities and compute uh, everything that dimensions 0, 1, and 2 have to say, uh, that rosensky witten models of these type have to say about dimensions 1, 0, and 2, in particular state spaces with defects like, like this one can be computed very straightforwardly not only in principle, but actual very straightforward. Good. So now a few more technical details. These objects, one cells and two cells of the category, what are they? Objects are lists of variables that are um, that you can think of as associated to coordinates of the target space or um, fields in the, uh, what we call the physical model. Then a one cell, um, from variables x to variables y, they might be of different length, are extra variables, physically extra degrees of freedom, um, and a polynomial in all these variables, a, x, and y, w as in uh, as the as the standard symbol for potentials in Lando Ginsburg models. That's no coincidence. Then horizontal composition is simply given by concatenating the, the variables and uh, adding new extra variables in between. So if we have uh, a one morphism from X to Y with variables A and polynomial W and another uh, composable one morphism from Y to Z with polynomial V and extra variable B, 
then we uh, lump together all the extra variables a, b, and the intermediate variable y to produce a, b, y, and then we simply add the two polynomials. So basically, uh, a horizontal composition is addition of polynomials. That's easy enough. And the identity is basically this polynomial, which um, you can think of as uh, a polynomial that wants to set x equal to x prime. To describe two cells, we have to talk about matrix factorizations. Um, let me remind you that a matrix factorization of a polynomial, say f, is a free Z2 graded module over the polynomial ring, together with an odd linear module map that squares the polynomial. And here you see an example where I've chosen the basis of, of those modules, and then this four times four matrix indeed squares to the polynomial F, which has something to do with the E6 singularity. Um, then uh, particular kinds of matrix factorizations are of causal type. If you start with two polynomials, well, um, with pairs of polynomials PI and QI, and then multiply them and sum them up, you again certainly get a polynomial. And by considering an exterior algebra, which is a deformation of the usual causal complex associated to uh, one of these sets of variables, then you get a matrix factorization. And in particular, if we take um, um, the, the QIs to be just XI prime minus XI and uh, the, uh, the PIs to be certain difference quotients, then we get something that turns out to be the identity cell in the two category. And the, in lambda Ginsburg models, it would be the, uh, the invisible line defect. Uh, if we know what matrix factorizations are, then we can consider a category whose objects are matrix factorizations and whose morphisms are given by the cohomology of a differential that is basically the graded commutator with these twisted differentials. And um, by restricting to just finite rank matrix factorizations, we're not in the best position, but if we idempotent complete, then we have a very good uh, category that has very nice properties and that one can compute with. Um, and in order to describe the unitus, we will need uh, we would need Knorr periodicity, but I think that's a detail uh, we we don't have to consider right now. But I'd be happy to discuss later. Now, this you've seen already: objects in the two category of truncated and fine Rosensky-Witt models are variables. One cells are polynomials with extra variables. And two cells are isomorphism classes of matrix factorizations. More precisely, if we want to consider a two cell from basically W to V, then we consider matrix factorizations of V minus W over the polynomial ring with all the variables. So now uh, I've discussed all the objects, one cells and two cells of the category. What are the various compositions? Here again is a picture for a two cell. It's a one, it's a X, a matrix factorization is a, a two cell from a W to BV, where both a W and BV, they are parallel one cells from X to Y. Uh, what are the compositions? Horizontal and vertical compositions of two cells of matrix factorizations are in both case simply uh, tensor products over the intermediate polynomial ring. So let's first consider horizontal composition, which is the first line up here. Uh, we have variables X and Y and Z, and we can horizontally compose capital X prime and capital X, but then we squeeze out the Y, so we take the relative tensor product over the polynomial ring in the Y variables. And very similarly for the case where we consider horizontal composition, there, um, this strand here comes, that's a, a one cell, which comes with the extra variable B over which we take the tensor product. So uh, how to do this also algorithmically is very well known and there are papers that explain how to do this. Uh, 
some of them are cited downstairs, not all of them. Most of them are not. Um, then what is the monoidal product? We know what horizontal composition and vertical composition is from the previous slide. The monoidal uh, product on objects is simply concatenation of lists of variables, while on one cells and two cells, it is just the tensor product over the complex numbers. So again, it's just the tensor product. On the previous slide, I had to explain uh, over which extra variables we take the tensor product here, it's just over C. And again, I remind you that my convention is to read 3D pictures from front to back. All right. Uh, now, the first theorem proven in this paper with Ilka Brunner and Daniel Roggenkamp from last year is that this two category has a natural symmetric monoidal structure where the symmetric braiding uh, has as one cell components basically just identities where we have to reshuffle in which order we think of the variables. So that's uh, a good structure, which means that we can take this two category, which we get basically from the analysis of Kapustin, Rosensky, and Saulina, um, as the target for an extended TQFT. Uh, in order to find uh, what these TQFTs are, we have to find the fully dualizable objects. And the first lemma is that every object, that is every list of variables, actually is dualizable. It's self-dual, and the one cells that describe the adjunction maps are matrix factorizations, which are the same as the identity two cells, but just viewed as two cells between different one cells, namely as evaluation, co-evaluation morphisms. And one can explicitly find matrix factorizations from of causal type that explain how uh, what is written above here indeed gives us uh, duality data for objects, so one dualizability data. Uh, the proof is uh, some, uh, some little calculation with matrix factorizations that I don't want to burden you with. Uh, a slightly more interesting result is that not only are F all objects in this two category of truncated affine rosensky witten models that I denote C dualizable, but they are all fully dualizable. So up here, the, the second, the, the first half of these two lines were already on the previous slide but also the adjoints of these adjunction one cells are given by the simple polynomial, simply A times X minus X prime times minus one maybe. And also the adjunction two cells like this uh, cup or this upside down um, saddle, they are given by some causal type matrix factorization. So for example, this one, which wants to send X equal to y and a prime equal to a. And for the evaluation, which is the upside down saddle, it's a bit more involved. One needs three factors of such causal type matrix factorizations. So all this is known and checking that this is true amounts to checking that the zero moves hold, which is a computation with isomorphism classes of matrix factorizations that one can perform successfully. Then the question is, uh, so this, this means that every object in this rosensky witten 2 category gives a framed extended TQFT. What about orientations? Uh, yes, all these objects have a trivialization of the cell automorphism. Actually, there are just two. And later it turns out that they both give rise to the same TQFT. So they are equivalent in the groupoid of TQFTs. Uh, the proof has some details, uh, no need to look at them at this point. What is more interesting is to construct this oriented TQFT in some more detail. So using the fact that every object is dualizable and the cell automorphism has a preferred standard trivialization, uh, let's use that now and compute what the TQFT does. So of course it sends the plus point to just a list of variables say of n variables. It sends evaluation one cells to certain polynomials with the extra variable A. It sends, for example, the circle to this polynomial, A minus A prime times X minus X prime. And we can 
uh, we've already seen what uh, the adjunction two cells are sent to, and then we can just compose them. So for example, we can compose this evaluation with this co-evaluation to get the two sphere on the left-hand side as an oriented manifold. Um, and then we can compute what that is. And it turns out that this um, state, uh, space of states from the three-dimensional rosensky witten point of view is this infinite dimensional vector space uh, in variables, uh, which is the polynomial ring in variables a and x. And this uh, shows how it's true that rosensky witten models for a fine, meaning non-compact target in particular, cannot be extended to the point um, as something that directly categorifies vect. But if we take modules over this ring, then I think we can get a 3D extended TQ of T. The reason why it's not a theorem is that I don't know how even the affine rosensky witten models give us a symmetric monoidal three category. So basically, sort of tetra category. To compute um, the TQ of T on all surfaces, we just take the oriented surface and chop it into the pieces, which are saddles, upside down saddles, identities, cups, and caps. And then one can compute what comes out for some genus G surface that is closed. And uh, the, the result is shown here, which is the result of a computation um, that was performed in this paper from last year. Okay, uh, so in my last four minutes or so, um, I, I want to highlight a few other directions that we've um, went into already and some that are worth uh, going into in the near future. So I think it would be very interesting already in this fairly simple case to compute mapping class group representations. In principle, that's for free because really this two category is an infinity two category, uh, I think because we take just isomorphism classes and the homotopy category of matrix factorization. So it must be the case that this works out. Um, Yang Yang and I uh, have started thinking about this, uh, um, but there are some other steps. Uh, first of all, it's really important from the point of view of the of theoretical physics to also incorporate flavor and R charges, which gives rise to extra gradings. The only reason why I did not um, talk about them in the main part of the talk is that formulas become much more complicated and uh, we might not see the forest for the trees. But for example, um, in, in this graded physically more relevant case uh, to a genus G closed surface, we we get a triply graded vector space, uh, which is described by this formula. In uh, non-written up joint work uh, with Ilka and Daniel, uh, we also have a construction for cotangent bundles of projective spaces. Of course, it would be, uh, that's option three, it would be very nice to do this for arbitrary compact targets. Uh, I've, I've heard Pavel Safonov talk about this. Uh, he has ideas how to do this, but uh, I don't know all the details. And option five uh, was intended to be part of the main topic of the talk, but then I thought in 45 minutes I should not cram all of this in. But one can construct extended defect DQFTs, which I want to consider in the last two minutes that remain, I think, to give you uh, a brief flavor on what this is. So I think in the literature, this is not discussed in a lot of detail, but in our upcoming paper, there will be some more details. There's, uh, of course, there's uh, the paper by Lurie, um, which is pictureless. Uh, and uh, here, one contribution is that we have some, some pictures of uh, two cells in a Buddhism category that are stratified and labeled, and there are some combinatorial things. Uh, and that forms a symmetric monoidal two category and the oriented Cobordism hypothesis with defects in two dimensions um, can be uh, phrased in a way similar to these more explicit phrasings of the oriented and framed bulk TQFT Cobordism hypothesis that are discussed as saying that extended defect TQFTs from the defect, that means stratified extended Bordism category to some target, is given in terms of the graphical calculus of a pivotal subcategory of uh, the fully dualizable objects. And um, if one makes this precise, as we aim to do in the 
in the paper that is upcoming, then there are lots of applications because, uh, as, as I said, one can prove that the homotopy 2 category of the fine rosensky witten models is such that every object is fully dualizable and it's pivotal, so we can apply this. And that in particular means one can consider boundary conditions and state spaces with defects. One can implement actions of groups or more general uh, orbifold actions, compute new orbifold to GQFTs or the old ones. And one can do something that in the physics literature is called turn on a background connection. And uh, if we try and do this, then indeed we can recover further results that have been around in the literature either for months, years, or well, in this case, months and years from this sort of first principle perspective of fully extended TQFT, at least truncated. And uh, this uh, leads me to my very last slide. Maybe two of the take point, takeaway points is that there are extended oriented TQFTs of various types. Uh, one of my favorite examples is that of Landau Ginsburg models, which is a uh, work from five years ago um, uh, and two years ago in the spin case. And then uh, most interestingly uh, for me these days is that we can understand truncated fine rosensky width models as extended defect TQFTs. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Neil. <laughs> Questions for Neil? So I have a general question. Are there relations between these different models? Are there direct relations? Um, or are they completely independent? You mean between, say, two-dimensional signal models, Landa Ginsburg models, and Rosensky Witten models? For instance, yes. Yeah. Uh, yes. Um, so it's fairly well understood to the extent that Rosensky Witten models are fairly well understood. Um, um, that if you compactify Rosensky Witten models on a circle, then you get uh, the B-twisted two-dimensional sigma model with the same target. Mm. Um, and it is Landau-Ginsburg models that describe surface defects of rosensky witten models. Mm. That's simply true the way I stated it um, in the affine case. In the non-affine case, there are extra vibrations of Landau-Ginsburg models that are relevant. Um, but the but so, so basically all the two-dimensional TQFTs that I know appear as um, as defects in rosensky witten models. I see. Maybe apart from state sum models. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. If not, let's thank Niels again. Thank you very much for the nice talk.